50 mm -hmm. episodes. What? what? Oh my gosh. Okay, okay you got it. Here's up. that one. Awesome. Let's do this. Can you believe it's been 50 episodes? What? That's oh my crazy. gosh. That's insane. Yay! Good yeah. morning. Good morning. <laughs> I'm Naomi. I'm Liz. And we're the Ren Galloway Girls. And you've been listening to us for 50 episodes, which <laughs> Thank seems, you! <laughs> which seems <laughs> crazy and incredible because we didn't even know if we were going to make it past like 10 episodes and now here we are at 50. I know. We're like, what are we going to talk about? Yeah. And here we are. <laughs> Still We're talking about a lot of about. stuff. <laughs> there's so much to talk about and there's new stuff each week and... We have a lot to talk about because you ran yes. a marathon, you ran the Philly Marathon, yeah. and you did so well, and it was Aww. so amazing. And so we're going to talk about mar your marathon and marathon yeah. recovery tips and kind of what's next, too, because yeah. we have, from December 4th, 15 weeks until Jeff's half marathon. Oh, my gosh. So, so we're turning right around, back well, in training, but I have a little been, recovery in between. I have been, like, putting together a 13-week plan for you so that you can have a really, really good, solid marathon recovery and take care of any twinges and niggles. Yes. And I want you, like, at the end of the marathon recovery to be, like, itching to get back into training. Yeah, yeah. Not, like... Tired oh, already. I'm already tired. Like, this is going to be so much. Yeah. So I'm putting together a 15-week plan, a 13-week plan, a 12-week plan, and an 8-week plan. Sweet. Well, in the 8-week plan, it will be the one we did last year. Nice. And so, so, we'll, so we'll offer some of those up or figure mm -hmm. out, like, get them out to, to you guys. Yeah. So, and Jeff's race, as you guys know, is in Atlanta on yes. March 17th. It's a half marathon. There's a 5K on Friday. And or on Saturday. Can, on Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on Saturday. And then a half on Sunday. And you can get 10% off using the code RGG10. So Yeah, come join us. Yeah, join us. And if you can't come to Atlanta, join us and run virtually. So there is a virtual option. Yeah. I met someone at the hotel from Atlanta and I was telling her about the race and I told her our code and she's like plugging Yay! it into her phone. I was like, she oh didn't know gosh. about Jeff's race, even though she lives there. She wow. just moved there like two okay. years ago. I'm like, come join us. It's, it's great. It's going to be really fun. So, yay. So fun. All right. So, fill us in on Philly. Yeah. So, Philly was incredible. It is an amazing race. I really, really, really love this race course. Okay. Now, I might have, you know, I might be a little biased. I lived there for two years. I went to grad school there. I love Philly. It's like one of my favorite places. Yeah. I would, you know, live, move back in a heartbeat. I was there. Um, or, you know, I, I ran a little bit when I lived there. So I kind of like, you know, had familiarity. I have familiar with the course and this was my second time running it, ran it in 2018, which is still my lifetime PR. Yeah. It's, I feel like it's a pretty fast course. Now it's not completely flat. It's not flat, but you know, it's like. It's like Richmond, yes. isn't it flat, but it's a fast course. It is. Courses don't have to be flat to be fast right. because what goes up must come down. And so, and also hills give you like variety. Yeah, exactly. So you may lose say like 5% of your speed on, on an uphill, but you may gain 10% on a downhill, so. And your legs aren't, your muscles aren't the same muscles repeated yeah. over and over. So you might feel a lot better than you do if you run something completely pancake flat. For me, that's the case. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's just my favorite. And so I was, I was a little nervous going in just because of this cycle we had. No idea, like, first of all, no idea if I should run or could run. And, you know, really just kind of nervous about finishing 26 miles because it's still so daunting yeah. at number 18. Yeah. Um, it's a big deal. It's still a big deal. Like it's, you know, again, we, you know, you should the, respect the distance. So, um, we, I decided to use 30 thirties because I felt like that was a safe interval yeah. and I have the ability with that because they're e equal. I have the ability to do run throughs if it feels good or if I have got those downhills, right, um, which is really nice. Um, even intervals are great for that, but never be, never like be afraid as you're running intervals on a great downhill and you're getting close to your beat for your walk to go ahead if you're using say a longer interval to just hit pause on those intervals and run through and then start your walk at the bottom of the hill like don't be afraid to adjust so but, yeah yeah 30 30s are great for that yeah and what, cheerleader beeps <laughs> yeah cheerleader beeps and there weren't um this was frustrating because i didn't see mile markers apparently there weren't any on the half people were complaining that there were 5k markers but oh. not like 5k 10k yeah and then 15k 20, you know but on the full there were a few but they weren't labeled and so i did not use like I auto lapped, which yeah. the GPS might be off. So I really didn't know how fast I was running those first few miles and it might've been too fast. I, it's hard to tell because right, right. the GPS is off. 
Um, but I tried to really keep it fairly conservative through, you know, I knew that around mile 10, 11, 12 are where the hills are in Fairmount Park, all the way up till 14. And then I kind of forgot how hilly it is going into Maniunk, that part at mile 18, 19, 20, 21 was hillier than I remembered. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was really hard that part. Um and yeah, like the, you know, so having the 30 30s was was really great, which I was glad that, you know, we've learned how to like use all these different pace yeah, or intervals. Yeah, all these different intervals and have so many in your toolbox. Right. And it's I know the day before you did a shakeout run and you were a little nervous cuz you had like a new little so, ache. Yeah, I should do it on Friday like because okay. we got there Thursday night. So Friday morning or Friday afternoon, I went out just for like a little, I was gonna go out one mile and turn around or less than a mile, turn around. And like, I stopped and put my phone down to take a picture and my glute seized up. Oh I've my never gosh. had this happen. I've never, ever, ever had my glute muscle like seize up. I yeah. could not run the next mile back. It wouldn't let me run. It was oh like no. seizing up and I was like, well, this sucks. Um, but then we, you know, went to the expo. I met Lauren Fleshman. I was Yay. fangirling so hard. I couldn't That's even amazing. like talk. I was like, yeah. oh my God, you're so inspiring. And um, she was awesome. And then, oh, I have to promo a product that is, we're not affiliated with, but Scott bought me for an early Christmas present, a pair of Aftershocks or shocks, uh -huh. I guess they're shocks. called. Okay. And they are amazing. As, as amazing as everyone says, I, this are is the first the time. Are these the headphones? They're the headphones. Yeah. That are the bone conduction or whatever. They're the kind with the thing around the back. So yeah, they're the yeah. open room pros. This is the first set of headphones that not only do they not fall out, which I have a problem with, I could hear my beeps throughout the oh, whole race. Oh, that's awesome. This is awesome. like critical, right? Because I yeah. miss the beeps at other races when I'm wearing my music because I need, didn't have you, I needed music. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, no, totally. I'm alone. <laughs> I've run all, of, I think I've used music in all of my solo races uh, maybe, I don't know. I can't remember if I use music at CIM. I've, I, I really it depends. Remember. Like a lot of times I'll put it on later in the race. Yeah. And like when I did Philly last time, I did use it and I used a, like a headband to kind of keep my headphones yeah. from falling out. And, um, and it just helps. Like it is yeah. a, it's like a, you know. So Swap was actually talking about that in this, in this week's episode, how you can use music to improve your cadence and the cadence improvements actually um, last after using the music. So there was a study where people ran and they took their average cadence and then they had them do a higher cadence music run and then had them do another run without music a week later and the cadence improvement lasted. Um, oh. So the, I think the music that they used was 10% higher than their normal cadence and at the end or 8% higher and then at the end, or maybe it was the eight beats. I don't know, something like that. Yeah. The improvement that lasted was like 7.5% or so 7.5 like, beats. Yeah. It's like a way to do cadence drills yeah, without like, but using the music. So too. it's also so like cool. beat doping, like cadence yeah. doping. And then something else that they pointed out that was really um, kind of impactful was as you age, you have to improve your cadence because improved cadence is how you're going to decrease load, even if your paces don't improve. Um, and reduce injury. Oh, and so okay. that is why, probably why we're seeing shorter run intervals um, with faster overall paces leading to even less injuries than we saw when Run Walk first came out. Like Run Walk right. has, is evolving from, you know, it used to be five minutes and of running, one minute of walking, and now we're seeing four, you know, slow paces. I think my mom did for like a 515 marathon did something like two and one. Right. And now a 515 marathon would do 30 30s. Right. So we're seeing like, you know. Or in our case, 15 30. Yeah, we're seeing an evolution in that. So, yeah, yeah, that's really it's interesting. Very, very cool. Well, that's, yeah, so that was something that I was really excited about and actually really annoyed with because a lot of people didn't understand Run Rock apparently. So the 30 30s, you know, I'm taking a lot of walk breaks. So I get a lot of people at mile three and mile six or patting I'm like, you can do it. You got this. And I was like, I know this is my 18 right. marathon. Yeah, I do run I walk. This. Run walk is awesome. I'm yeah. only going to have to run 13 miles and walk 13 miles. You guys, yeah, like, right? I've, hacked, <laughs> I've hacked the system. I know so, that's really, it does feel like that, doesn't it? It feels like we found a cheat code. It totally <laughs> is. It totally is. And I, and I'm finishing like, you know, in the, the same place as these people, I had a girl actually 
push me at one point, um, which I was like, there's no need to push, honey. Like, this is not yeah. a crowded course, actually. Philly is a very, compared to like Marine Corps, which I yeah. feel is, is so crowded. Yeah. It's actually a pretty, like, there's a lot of open areas. There's some areas where it gets narrow, but it, for the most part, it's a much wider, like, the streets are wider. And then, yeah, then I passed her in mile, like, 21. I was, like, glaring at her. I was, like, so how did that work out for you, like, pushing me? Or, yeah. Like, but that's, that is my only, like, has, thing about when you go to a race and you're one of the few run walkers, especially towards middle or front of the pack. Yeah, yeah. You end up being, like, people don't understand. And, like, we need to just, we need to do something on the backs of our shirts. Like, as yes. much as I don't love the big sweatshirts that we have from uh, the Galloway group. Oh, that's like, I'm jeffing. <laughs> it's because people don't really, like, People in the, I mean, in the Red Walk community kind of get it, but like, you know, maybe something that says I'm, I'm doing intervals, like yeah. walking is part of my plan or something like that, like and, for the backs of our shirt. Yeah. And I did like, so not only did I raise my arm, which like yeah. half of my photos are me with my arm up, <laughs> so, but not only did I do that, but I actually was doing like what we do when we pace. So I was like three, two, one, walk, and that way, like people would know I was yeah, walking, and I was like good. trying to like again, like not get pushed or bumped for no reason, or have people like, you know, kind of rudely like, you can do it, you got this. And I'm like, yeah. I know, I know. Then Thank I you. you. At the end. Yep. <laughs> um. And so, what was my slowdown? I think my slowdown from the first half to the second half, because again, it, um, it was hard. It's about five. I did my figure out my splits. It was five minutes and thirty-seven seconds was my. Yeah. Between my I first mean, half and second half. I split. still think that if you had run that first half the slower, the second half would have been faster. But like, that's so hard mentally to get your brain around. And you don't, like, you had no idea what your actual fitness was for this. Right. Like, I, I mean, it, like, I was like watching your splits and I was like, I was like, oh, going out at, at CIM pace, we're going to add about seven, eight minutes. And I was like, right on. <laughs> um, because, it, like, I just know that we're not in CIM shape, or not CIM, oh, uh, Mountains Beach. Mountains oh, Beach. Okay. You were going out at Mountains Beach, pay, like, average pace. Like, at the half, I think you were right on 409.50. So we, and I was like, yeah, I was, I was slower like, than we did at Mountains Beach, though. Right, right. 206 right. versus Mountains right, Beach, we did a 206. Had you been able to do an even? And I was like, yeah. I was like, there's going to be this slowdown. Like, ah, yeah. uh, but I think. Like, this is a huge improvement for you, the way that right. you have taken out races in the past. Like, this is the equivalent. We're getting close. We're getting close to being able to negative split. What's, <laughs> We're yeah. so close. What's amazing, too, is that um, it, the, you know, the effort level. So the only other thing, too, is, like, I, my legs will slow down at the end. Like, no matter what I do, they start to, yeah. especially if I go out you know, especially go out hard, but if you, even if I go out with just something that's kind of the edge of my fitness and this was a hundred percent proving where the edge was of my fitness for right this now. distance, for, for this, this distance, distance right now, I still think if you had like raced a half, you would have been faster than last year. Like, I think you would have been able to do like a one forty nine. Um, like, I don't know about that. I, I just I, don't, my fitness I is do. not where it was a year ago I, because I of this really short do. cycle. Because, well, because we've been focused on distance. I think like, I think you really are in faster. I think you could do short distance, per, short distances pretty fast. Um, and so I'm really excited for Jeff's race. Like, I really think that you can get in 145 shape. I think and, with, with the lead up and with speed work, cause I definitely was, it was a, a complete, you know, 180 for how I felt like a year ago after yeah. New York, where right after New York, I could run the next day. Now, I literally couldn't walk on Sunday. I so it literally felt That's like good. I had run a PR. I was in that bad of shape. But New York, you, you know. also didn't run. Like, that was not cardio. That didn't push you cardio or physically. It just pushed you heat tolerance-wise. Right. So it's just like uh, Marine Corps this year. Yes. You felt just fine. Like, yeah. you know, so this was, this Mostly. was the equivalent, <laughs> like, you know, of going out and doing that, that half after, like doing this great marathon, like, this is fantastic. Like you did such, such an amazing run. How, it was pretty close to your Garmin predict too. Yeah. It? No, my Garmin predict said like 406 or something. Oh, okay. It still it says down. that. It got down to but, that. Okay. Oh yeah. But that was like, you know, that's with, it's not like at all taking into consideration where we where we were I don't know like the Garmin pictures are a little whack <laughs> but but it's where it was a couple of weeks ago right like before probably, Marine Corps probably. like it was in the teens I thought oh yeah anyway. yeah 
probably. I, I mean, I just think it's, I think it's fantastic. I think you did so well. Um, oh yeah, I'm super happy with, with it. And with the fact that, yeah, like my other times where I've had a, a smaller um, differential were times when I was either pacing someone else or it yeah. was a training run. Yeah. And so I've only had like one or two other, I've only had one or two other actual races that had this close of a, um, split where the you know it wasn't a mega you know, positive you know split. what be, would be cool is then take that take that amount of time and figure out the percentage, percentage because then i think you'll find that that's actually a smaller percentage than five minutes or the same number at a faster race like right. think about that too um and you know just be like so proud i know that there's a lot of comparison to like Oh, that felt like a PR effort, but it's not a PR, but like it's where your current fitness is. And like, like, I think I, I can't remember if I texted or commented publicly when we talk about like, we can't assign moral value to fitness. You can't say I'm in bad fitness now or I'm good fitness because then there's always like that comparison and judgment that can just make you feel awful. Right. So all you have is current fitness. I guess you have past fitness. You can strive to get, but like all you have is your current fitness and I yeah. guess you have to be like grateful for it, right? Oh yeah. Because otherwise you're constantly going to be striving. There's you, nothing is ever gonna be good enough. It's just like why weight is a horrible metric right. because what happens when you get to that weight and it doesn't look the way you want it to? Or what happens when you get to that race and sure you run a great time, like what if you run a great time and you weren't expecting it? Like, does that devalue? Like, remember when we were like, we're gonna break 120 in the 10 miler at, at Parkway, yeah, Parkway and then Classic. we went out for an easy 10 miler at the resting course and we were at 119 and we're like, Oh, oh, we did it. Now what? Well, well, yeah, no, I actually... It still led to a great season, but it find, kind of felt like weird to hit our goal way right. before we not were supposed to. Yeah, not expecting it. And it's... Now, it wasn't process driven. Yeah, that's what, what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. No, and like when I say like it feels like a PR and the, 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 the yeah. tiredness and the soreness I feel, I actually mean it in like the way of like, yeah, I like ran a Good. PR this right. week. Like, yeah. even though technically I didn't, but that's how I feel about it because on you this- You ran a current fitness PR. Yeah, and on <laughs> this like level of training, and I felt you ran a like I- PR? It's a, well, Mountain Speech would have been. Oh yeah, well, this duh. is a non speech was faster. Duh. This, four nine. this would be a fastest my forties. Yeah, <laughs> there yeah. you go. Spin it's it. also a but, sol It's a solo postpartum PR. Yeah. Because you ran yeah. solo. Exactly. Uh, versus team it's, effort when we were right? team effort. <laughs> no, it definitely feels like I, you know, it feels like a huge accomplishment because yeah. it feels like I really, you know, I worked hard. I put, you know, I actually had to dig. I, I did. I dug. I didn't like let it go. Like right. I've done it other races where I'm just like, it doesn't matter. Who cares? The time doesn't matter, which is true because who cares? The time doesn't matter. But I was like, no, you can dig a little. And I, you know, I you made myself it. dig. I'm so proud of you. I yeah. was so excited the whole day. I, I love that Philly starts so early too. Like after to the time see. change, they, yeah. like we now have the light in the morning. So yeah. it starts at seven. So it was funny. Like, you know, I, I got there super duper early because of the security uh, fiasco that was on yeah. Saturday. So I went there super early on Sunday, um, hung out in the heated tents, and then um, waited in the potty line forever. And then while I was waiting in line, the VIPs, the pros came through. It's Lauren Fleshman, Jared Ward, Bart Yasso. So first, you know, first I see Bart, and I'm like, Bart! And he comes over and gives me a high five, and he's like, have fun out there. And um, yeah, it's good to yay. see you. Like, he remembered me. And then Lauren was like, hi. And I was like, hey. And she's like, good luck. <laughs> It's like Aww. little, and then like Jared was like hyping everybody up. That's and like, awesome. It that's was fun. So, so great. I said hi to them, ah, and that's then so then got through the potty, and it was you know that thirty minute line that it was time to get in the crowd and start. And my because I had signed up a year ago, my I was in the black crowd, which was like the three forty pace group was in there. Yeah. So I went to the back of the corral because I didn't. There was no reason to move back because right, I was still right. going to run my own race. Right. So I just stood in the very back of our crowd so I could start when our wave started. Yeah. So it was relatively early. And then I just let the, you know, the pacing groups all go. And like, yeah. you know, it didn't it didn't bother me when they passed me, obviously. I mean, that could be why you started a little quicker, too. Like, that happens. Like, I've definitely had that happen. I know for me, like, I've done that. And then I've also moved back, like, at different, at different races, like, 
you kind of settle into your own if you if you can control like your own brain of it yeah. you settle into your own plan by like two or three miles but I looked at your heart rate data it didn't look like you spiked early it looked like really like controlled the whole way and like it was it was like like that's marathon effort like, yeah um you know half in red, half in orange. That's, that's <laughs> is it like it would? I would see it go into the one seventies and the one eighties, and then my walk breaks would come back down to the one sixties, and I was like, okay, good, because you know, one seventy, it kept hovering at one seventy two, and that's like threshold territory, and I don't want to, I didn't want to get sick. I forgot the Zofran. Oh, oh no! <laughs> but luckily, it was forty one degrees at the start, and yeah. I never got like overheated, so it's I never like got the, sick. It's like the perfect, perfect weather, weather for you. I know. It makes me so excited that we've signed up for Richmond. I know. Because I'm, I'm like so pumped and we have some like big decisions to make, whether we yes. do decide to do the Marine Corps Richmond CIM or we just do Marine Corps Richmond right. and we put CIM off. Um, but I, like either way, I definitely want to try to run like fast ish at Richmond. Yeah. Like I feel like I feel like we can do it. Yeah. I and whatever like fast ish is at that time. At that time, you know? right. Like I'd like to make Richmond like a good effort. I'd like to see if it if we could make it like an eighty five like if we decide to do a CIM as, as as a goal race, like still do like an eighty five percent effort, like hard workout day. Because like looking back, like fourteen by one workouts are twenty miles and three out like we were fast 20 yeah. miles in three hours two weeks out so great right. and this is going to be three weeks out right. so it's like we just move things around and yeah i'm i'm really excited um to like plan and you know yeah kind of get, get all of that going i like put together so it's so funny you know we both have pelotons and I'm like, I really need to get back on my bike. I need to figure out how to get back on my bike. So I did the discover, like I started the like learn, like you can ride program, which is nice. like the very beginner, like oh, three good. 20 minute rides a week. And I was actually thinking I was going to have you do that after your 10 days off or okay. whatever, because it's like three 20 minute rides. It's like a very, it's an ease in and it's only yeah. like four weeks long nice. and you can stack the running on top of it towards right. the end um but like yeah um, ease back into something yeah, I like that yeah. yeah I'd like to get back to, you know start and doing some strength, strength eventually I know like I feel like days, though, barely days. oh I don't want to do anything now which is <laughs> again what is great about it is like you know you feel like I, it was a cherry you feel like it it was closed out my season. my season it was I put it all out there I worked hard and I'm yeah. you know I'm still like I'm not a sore today but like Sunday night we you know had an Uber um, to dinner and we I get out of the Uber it was a Tesla so it was like those low seats and or bucket seats you know I get out and my hip just gave out oh, <laughs> I was no. like gonna fall over and then yesterday we got home our on um, no Monday I drove we didn't stop it's like it was three hours with the traffic yeah get out of the car I my leg the one I you know my left leg it didn't drive I could not lift it with my own knee oh. I had to like lift it with my hands I was like oh my god it feels like when I had an epidural because it's a dead leg and oh so I get gosh. out of the car and I'm like wobbly and I I'm like Lila I need to hang on to him to fall over and so I hang on to Lila and she's walking me in the house and she doesn't like she wouldn't have the reference point of like a drunk person right right so her reference point she goes man did you like spin around 10 times in a row <laughs> <laughs> because I was like so wobbly. That's hilarious. Couldn't put weight on my like Did so. Spin I love it. Her reference. Sensor, point. sensory seeking ADHD kid. Yup. So she, she knows. <laughs> she knows. So it's like I was so wobbly and so my my legs were so shot from this effort. My quads I were mean, so dead. That's, that's Which is, marathon effort. It, like exactly. That's, exactly. That's marathon effort. That's that's so great though. It's awesome. And then what's really funny? I posted it yesterday on Instagram. So people who saw this I already, saw. this is wild, right? Like I, we ran with Lauren in 2018. Yeah. We ran her, her marathon, her MCM, her pace. We her ran PR her, that her year. Her PR for the, for that 435, time. 435, right? 435. It was, yeah, we ran a 216 first half, 218 back half. Great job pacing her to her PR. Then, you know, three weeks later, I ran Philly. My, my, my PR, 346. It's, that's a 49 minute differential. Yeah. So then this race, and I had kind of had it in the back of my mind when I was looking at what's physically possible we yeah. ran a 508 I was like what's physically possible I'm like you know I looked at what we did before it's like 49 minutes would be 419 I'm like ooh, that's a stretch 49 minutes and that's what I did 49 that's minutes it's that's wild so awesome so that something so about cool. like knowing like 
kind of where your limits are. Yeah. So like if you run a slower race on purpose because you run as a training run, you run it with a friend. Yeah. Then, you know, there is that possibility that, yes, if you run that slower race, then three weeks later, you can definitely do yeah. you know, something bigger than maybe you thought. What's what's 423 minus, 430, minus 332? Um, that's, that's like it's right around there, 40, yeah. Right, because because that's what I did. That's when to see I am. That's I think that's forty nine minutes, <laughs> isn't it? Wait, so it's it's it'd be thirty minutes would be to uh, four oh two, and then another twenty one. So it's fifty one minutes. Yes, yeah, it's around fifty. It's minutes. right about there. That's hilarious. Wild. That is really crazy because that's what I did. Richmond to see I am. Yeah, and it's not again like you could take the percentage; it might be different. Yeah, but. Anecdotally, it's just fascinating, yeah. and I think for I mean that that would make sense. About right, about between forty-five two minutes, minutes and an hour, two minutes lower per mile. Easy run, yeah. Two minutes per mile, hey, fifty-two minutes. I think we're just. I think we're just like like piling on more data points yeah. to prove this over distance training. Yep, works. This Galloway over distance training, and while you know, like that was it to the PR, like you can slow down even more on the slow runs, right? right. Like, it, like that's not gonna hurt you. Right, two minutes um, per mile was, yeah, like again, we were pacing Lauren to a PR, you paced yeah. her again to a PR with that, but 52 minutes would be two minutes per mile, so that's approximately yeah. what you should be, at least, as a minimum, right. aiming for if you're doing like a three week, yeah, two that's marathons incredible. back to back. That's so like, fun. That's really, I mean, the only other times I've, I've done faster because I did 409 yes. to 350. Yes. But I mean, but I probably, probably could have with some specificity in my training, because I had no specificity in my training back then, could have gotten into maybe 330 shape right. that season. But I did zero fast running. Like right. I did all easy running. Well, and that 409 is kind of like what you're talking about with doing a 20 by one. Like your 409 yeah. was like doing your like a hard, last hard yeah. workout. So it's very, yeah, exa again, it shows that the over distance works. Yeah. And that, yeah, whether you're doing it, you know. That's kind of like what I'm thinking about, like, like either use Richmond as that hard workout for CIM or use Marine Corps as the last, as the 29 for the hard Richmond right. uh, next year. Right. And so, yeah, one of the things I talked to a friend of mine who's an Ironman, who's had two pregnancies and she said, uh, remember pregnancy is like, um, it's like essentially doing low aerobic base training 24 hours a day because you have like the extra blood volume, blood volume. Mm -hmm. and you have that baby that's like, so that's the extra cardio strain. She's like, so focus on your strength and then kind of hammer it on like short workouts, like on the bike or, you know, like you can do some easy running, but like, don't forget to do some like hammer it kind of workouts yeah. that build strength, but just like a tiny amount because you don't need a, need a lot. And she's like, I wouldn't even worry about like, uh, like aerobic base building because your whole life is aerobic base right. building during pregnancy. I was like, that is a good point. She's like, but strength, man, you need all the strength. Yeah. But she was talking about how when her hormones crash, so you're pregnant, your hormones are super high. And then when you're breastfeeding, your hormones are essentially gone. Mm -hmm. So that's why you're open to all like the bone injury risks yeah. and all the like injuries. So you have to like build your strength during pregnancy to like kind of combat that. And then she was talking, it's funny because it made me think of you. After she finished breastfeeding, she was like, it was weird. Then I just, when the hormones started coming back, the weight just went up. Up, up, yeah. up, 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 up. And like, so it's not that like, oh, you stopped breastfeeding and you don't need the calories anymore, but it was like literally the hormones, that, the hormones causing that like shift again. And then, you know, and then being 40 and on then, top right, of it, our my body is and like, all of that. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's no, that's really interesting too because when I, if I look back at what I was doing in 2020, which of course we, it was, all the races were canceled, I was doing all these virtual low 24 5k's, 5Ks yeah. i was doing you know mid seven for On a mile your own, just like out just <laughs> out running and like yeah like i had some really good like cardio fitness which now at low 24 5k is the fastest i've done since Oof. you know we have a big goal though here on the on the third of december coming up oh boy yeah <laughs> we can do it we're gonna run a 5k and i want to be 26 something 
So we'll see. I mean, I might Do have it. to adjust that. <laughs> like, I just, my heart rate goes up and I feel so uncomfortable with, yeah. my, with a high heart rate now. But I was thinking, I was thinking like 60, 20s maybe. I yeah. We'll have to like practice with some of that. Again, it's kind of like yeah. that. We're talking about running longer hasn't been I mean, something we've and done. We'll just figure it out. It'll be fine. Figure but it out on the course. <laughs> yeah. I just mean it's something that like, since we haven't done it, that was also something going into Philly. I knew that like I was not going to pick a longer interval yeah. because I haven't run. Like 30 seconds feels like a long time right it now does. for where I'm at. And so. Well, and like I was on the treadmill the other morning and I was like practicing running at eight flats because yeah. I don't know how to run at eight flats. I know how to run at 710 real like <laughs> great. I yeah. run 710, but I need to practice running at like 745 right. and eight you know, for a minute versus 720 for 30 seconds. Right. So, or 650 for 30 seconds, right. let's be honest. And that's where, right. And that's where like by myself, I, you know, didn't have too many moments where I was up in the sixes. I had a couple, but like most of my run on Sunday was oh, do the overlay 710 the or seven. Yeah. So like I was in the, you know, in the high sevens for most of the run yeah. segments and low eights, which is where I ha tend to hover. Yeah. 746, 740, you know, that's where I tend to to run. So, right. um, and then- Whereas I tend to run more in the 720s. Right. Um, for shorter, like I just, my legs like to move. They which, like to turn over. It's great, except that when my heart rate decides it's, like, it's not physically possible. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and like that, I mean, the last, the last half mile at Philly is an uphill, which is, Ugh, is killer, so especially because your watch has already beeped at 20, you know, you're past 26, 26 miles yeah. and you know, you're running uphill and, yeah. uh, but it was still amazing. I was so I, proud of my effort. I want to do it. Like, I was so sad that I wasn't I know. running. Me too. Um, Me too. Especially when like the signups like rolled through, like my memories rolled through of signing up last yeah. year. Yeah. But like, I remember signing up and being like, well, hopefully I hope you're can't pregnant. run it and I, because I'm pregnant and like, we I were am, hoping. so. Yeah, exactly. So that's so good. I know. I was so hopeful that, yeah, that you wouldn't be pregnant, wouldn't be able to, but also I was so sad, like, especially just going to the start by myself and not, yeah. and like thinking about, well, and like, that's where I was like, you know, when Scott got me the shocks, I was like, I, since I won't have Liz, I need music. I need some. Aw, I love it. That's oh, awesome. Oh, and for people who, again, not affiliated at all, but they're having Black Friday sale, like they're a really oh, good deal awesome. right now. So tell your spouse or your partner to get you some shocks because they you hear your beeps. Set, they have a set, I think that... Oh my gosh. I, I'm going to have to check. They have a swim set too. Yeah, that's they what do. I was going to say. They, they have do. a swim set, mm -hmm. but I think it's an MP3 player. I think you have yes. to hook you it have up to, to your computer, you have to which put is music the on same it. as mine. They are, another brand makes one that's bone conduction that look like the shocks, but they have a little FM or radio tower that comes with it. So you Bluetooth to the radio tower and then the radio tower goes to your um goes to your headphones because Bluetooth doesn't work underwater. So. Oh, fascinating. Yeah. So it, uh, I love bone conduction though. It's awesome. I have a yeah. swim P3 player from Finnis. They make, they make another version now, but mine is literally from like 2010 and it still works. That's so awesome. It. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was also like, because you know, you want to hear the crowds like Philly has a great, has great support. Oh, um, good. like a lot of, you know, city races, you've got, everyone comes out and people are amazing and people are giving out beer. And I was like, hell yeah, I'm going to do it because this is a dumb idea, but why not? So I took a beer at mile four yeah, and then um, at mile 21, there was somebody with beers and he was just, he had his big can, he's pouring it into cups. And I was like, that's awesome. Yeah. That's <laughs> like, so fun. So silly. It is. It is fun to take beer from like, strangers and candy fun and, to do stuff yeah. like that at races. Even when you're going for max effort. Like I remember in Richmond when we ran yeah. together, we took what pickle juice, pickle juice and, candy. and candy and we're like, and Coke and we're like, yeah. Coca-Cola. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be clear. And we were like, I mean, why not? It's Everything so new on race day. Oh, it's so fun. I had, yeah, brand new pair of shorts I'd never run in. My skirt was brand new, of course, yeah. never run in. The shocks were new. Um, I used the Saucony Elites. I love the Endorphin Elites. Oh, awesome. So worth the 275. My feet didn't hurt. They didn't hurt at all. Now, oh. I, the next day I did feel like the the pads, like, because I was toe running, yeah. the pads by my toes were a little sore, yeah. but no plantar pain, That's awesome. no pain during, which I had pain with my, like, my training shoes during Marine Corps. My yeah. feet hurt after. So those, yeah. I, I yeah, love the Saucony Endorphin Elites. I've definitely worth the, the money. 
Um, what else was yeah. new? I feel you like I always new I stuff feel like on maybe me. I should give you the new sunglasses. I bought the extra. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I should give you the um, Sockney uh, Kinvara Pros for you to try out oh, because okay. I I tried them once and I'm just didn't like, like no. I'm I like, can try them no. and see. Um, because I feel like you've liked all of the Sockneys oh. I've tried and haven't. And the endorphin elites, I still want to give a try. I still want to try. I like passed them on because the sizing, yeah. they feel so short. Yeah. They, so if they fit me, yeah, they thing. must be like not. That is one thing about the, all the new Saucony fast shoes is like they feel short to me. Yeah, so go up. Um. So yeah, make sure you go up a size. Because I can, and I have my whole insoles in on top That's of the awesome. insoles in there. That's good. Um. But yeah, so those, so those were, those were great. I don't know. I've had a bunch of new stuff on. I was trying to remember all the new stuff. But yeah. It's like, yeah, try everything in new on race day. Everything new on race day. <laughs> and so um, we're talking about, so we've, recapped her marathon now marathon recovery yeah so the biggest thing is and after a race like this you can be so excited that you're like I want to jump right back into training and let me tell you we have done that so many times yep. we've been like oh yeah yay season's over two weeks later we're doing eight by one yeah no I like, even like I want to recover because I've it was a hard season but I even felt like way finishing this marathon I was yeah. like I want to do more marathons, which finally, because a lot of times yes. I finish marathons and I'm like, I, why am I doing this? I hate this. And this time I finished it being like, I want to do this again. Like, Yay. I want to do this again. This is great. I loved it. And so um, it's very easy to get either you ran, didn't have the day and you're like, I'm right. jumping right back into, you know, yeah. keep going. Or you had a great day and it kind of, you know, fuels that fire of like, yes, I want to do this yeah. again. But you got to let your body recover. And like as much fun as running spring season marathons are, fall se late fall marathons are so much better. And I think that's also it. Like we run a we run a spring marathon and we're like, oh, because it's so hot. When like you had a great day because it was a late fall and it was yeah. cold and it was like right like that's the marathon that like you know gets you pumped gets you pumped to do it yeah. again. Sign up for the so next one. for marathon recovery, you want at least five to seven days off, and then you want uh, seven to nine days after that of easy activity. And so, a lot of people say one day off per mile raced. I'm kind of more of a believer of half a day per mile raced. So one day off for every two miles raced. Um, but although race a half marathon and taking two weeks off after is not a huge deal, 14 days. So we're kind of looking at about two weeks of really, really easy activity, no running um, for those first five to seven days. I think I put in 10 days for you um, this of time. Of no running, yeah. Of no running and then back on the bike. Um, and then you want to reverse taper after that. And so you want two weeks. So this is about four weeks time total. You want... Um, yeah. Uh, reverse taper of two weeks of easy running you still want to sleep a lot because it's not that the day of the marathon broke you down it's the weeks of training that broke you down like through training like that is part of how training works is it breaks you down to make you stronger but there are some effects from it that you have to recover from you're going to have a little more inflammation you're gonna have a lower immune system all of those mm -hmm. things you need to like reset your system get back to homeostasis before you head into hard work again um and it will make you so much better long term and eat like that's the key of it yes. to not just sleep but you're eating as if it's sort of like the reverse taper like you ate during taper your body is now poised to like pull in that glycogen again and restore yeah. it back to those muscles and protein and, protein. and car like eat it all and you know actually swap just had a had a really cool thing about um their whole episode was about food and fuel and fueling on workouts in order to improve the next day's workout yes yeah so when you go out on that 60 minute easy run sure you don't actually need fuel to complete that 60 minute easy run but if you fuel then that workout the next day is going to be better. It's going to be 1% better. Yeah. And it's not that that 1% improvement is all that great. It's that over time, stacking 1% improvements, that's where the limits of physiology are really being like tested. That's where breakthroughs are happening. So by fueling easy runs, 
you're just setting yourself up for more success as thing as the work gets harder. Yeah. I, I found, um, this was fueling for my, for the marathon, not for, you know, the rest of the week, but I found that, you know, I really I've had to play around with what I can tolerate and, um, what yeah. I can eat easily. So I had, instead of like a lot of times before a marathon, I'll try to have a bagel or some oatmeal and I like can't choke it down. So I had two of the whole packs of nature's bakery bars. So yeah. two times the fig bars, so that's 400 calories. Yeah. That's and then great. during, I took a ton of Martins with me. So I had like seven Martins with me and I had, you know, I saw you had bunk breakers. Big ones. Yeah. I had one pack of bunk breakers and I had two of the big Martins and then like three or four of the small Martins. I had a ton yeah. of, a ton of Martins. Cause I found for me, the Martins are, you know, I can consume them quickly yeah. versus if it's, if I have to chew it, like those cliff shot blocks that they're giving out in the course here too. Like Marine Corps, they're like no, so I can't chew, chew them. I know. So you can find like, you can The bomb play breakers I can chew. Yeah. I, like to, I always like to have the honey stinger or something like that or the bomb breakers or beans like yeah I marathons I have like one pack of each right and then Martin's when I'm racing because yeah. but I actually want to try precision I do again, too not sponsored um but apparently it. so again I was listening to swap this morning about I'm about halfway through and they were talking that somebody wrote in they said I really love precision and David omitted the company that bothers their stomach. And I was like, I bet it's Martin. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. they're the other hydrogel out there. Yeah. Right? The other one. And yeah. I love Martin until I don't. Until it doesn't work for you. Until I don't, until it hits my stomach and everything wants to come out. So. And they don't bother me at all. And, and you know, I, I found that yeah. I was, this time I just like sucked down the whole gel instead of trying to do half and put away half. I was like, just you know Suck get the down. fuel yeah. in and i try to get the fuel in earlier so because i worry because it happens a lot in races where later i can't eat and so I, my yeah. bonk breakers i had them at the, towards the end and i have um, the i have the other problem where like you have to get your fuel in early because you can't eat later i have the problem of like i have to get it in like steady the whole time right. too much because Whoa. too much makes it so that i can't eat so yeah um um, but yeah, so fuel, so recovery, you know, you're going to keep eating, um, you know, you're not going to just shut down and be like, well, I'm not exercising for these 10 days, two weeks, you know, it, it's actually even runners world even recommends as much as now this is active recovery, not just stopping, but they recommend anywhere from, you know, 26 days up to 42 days of active recovery. So a day per kilometer. A, oh. a day per mile or a day per kilometer, but it doesn't mean it means that you'll means, stop running for seven to ten days completely, and then and then you'll and then do you're low rebuilding. impact yeah. exercise for the next so sixty to sixty five percent heart rate for the next you know what is that like three weeks of recovery, three to and, four weeks, you know, and of additional like recovery. Getting back to the fact that thirty minute, twenty minute runs count, thirty minute runs count. Yes. You know, like it when you're marathon training, you can get into this headspace where like it doesn't count unless I've gone an hour. It doesn't count unless I've done six miles. Like that can be like very difficult. And great right, because you're so used to those right, longer for those longer runs. runs. So yeah, it's um, DOMS of course will set in, and that's you know that just means the more the more soreness, the longer recovery. This is from Runner's World. Yeah. Um, lack of soreness means you were very well prepared for the demands of the race, or maybe you didn't race, right? Like you had yeah. again. That's what happens in New York. I had no soreness. I was out running two days later, which I shouldn't have. Um, resting heart rate and HRV, of course, those are big indicators. My HRV tanked. Um, you know the the night <laughs> like it, it's kind of climbing back up now slowly, but I've yeah. had like three or four bad. HRB nights, but it's, it's on an upward it's trend, it's which is normal, yeah. totally yeah. normal. So walking, riding a bike, stretching, swimming, um, you know, low, low. I would say the one type of running you can get back to, and I actually put it on your schedule is pool running. Yeah. You can, um, you can get back in the pool and do pool running. It's not going to affect you because there's not the physical load. Um, just like you could get back to biking relatively quickly. Um, I think, you know, there is some benefit to just like actually taking, taking a break and like learning to take a break, if that makes sense. Yes, mentally. Too, because I think so many of us who train for races, especially when we've trained year round for multiple years, get in our mindset that if I'm not training, I'm like, I've lost my value. And so like remembering that rest is part of training yeah like it's like as important. I actually was thinking today about like 
making some shirts that said, I want to go for a run, but my coach said it's a rest day or something. Oh, yeah, that'd be cute. Like, you know, bringing back rest day brags, like, yeah. and really, like, leaning into that. So Yeah, definitely. And so, yeah, just, and, and whatever happened at your race, again, let, you know, close out the season. Yeah. Let it be, you know, if it was a disappointment, that's okay. Like, that's normal, too, because you cared that much about your race. You wanted something else, and it didn't happen, and... Doesn't mean though, again, doesn't mean going out and, and get back getting right back into and it. get back to figuring out the process and like right. enjoying the process because if if all if you care about is the time is on a the, day, then then maybe figure out maybe this maybe. isn't for you. Yeah, exactly. I was thinking about that with how funny is it that running is the sport that that we ch have chosen and it has it revolves around times. Yeah. And how funny is it though that if we were playing tennis or if we were any other, like, you know, any sport, pickleball, all my friends yeah. are starting pickleball. Like, what if we were doing <laughs> something else that wasn't running and we could find this enjoyment, like surfing or you yeah. know, any other sport that wouldn't necessarily revolve around specific, hitting specific times, skiing? I yeah. mean, yes, of course, if you're like a race, a you're ski racing, yeah. but like, that's not the way, like my, my daughter loves skateboarding and skiing and there's nothing in there that's like, worrying about a specific hitting a specific time for her and so it's like but why is, are we so is she obsessed? like is she trying to learn skills though because i guess that yeah like exactly mastering skills. mastering skills and i guess running is kind of like like hitting those times is also like mastering skills it is but i think but we like, obsess yeah and versus... maybe at the beginning it's about like like getting distances like right, right. so it's checking like, the box oh, 13.1 oh, doing enough races like, point two. Yeah. i was very like very invested in doing like 12 races a year yeah. and like very invested in like running a bunch of 5k's right. I like think about how much money I've spent on race, like, on race, race registration <laughs> oh my gosh I almost registered for the frosty 5k and I was like it's $50 already oh no I mean I probably will register for it yeah I think we should do some of those they're but, so fun yeah yeah I mean I I have to run in my um my I usually much faster when I'm not so freaking pregnant yeah Sugar, exactly like, have to do <laughs> it. some pregnant races for baby yeah but yeah so it's such a like we get so obsessed and if we could you know focus on some other aspects of it learning mastering the skills of like taking all the fuel that I brought with me on Master, the course mastering the skill of enjoying the entire exactly. time of mastering the skill of not being obsessed about times mastering right. the skill of you know, really being present in the moment and training. Right. I'm like, so like, I'm so excited to get back to training. Like, it's so funny. I'm like, like, I mean, right now it's really difficult because I'm so tired all the time yeah, too, but I'm like, a baby. but I'm like, I'm excited. I'm like, I'm going to yeah. be able to do this. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I totally understand. Like, and I even, yeah, and I, even if like we fall short, like of time, like I have, Oh, so I've been like working on our plan for the fall. Exciting. <laughs> such a nerd. I love it. And I was like, okay, so like the first like two or three mile repeats, we're going to do them at like a slower goal pace. And then we're going to like inch them up as we progress so that it's not like we're jumping into something that's super defeating right at the, right at the get go. So I'm really excited. About Yay. That. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So like we'll we'll start at like a four ten right. like reach, and then we'll we'll inch it down from there as we see. Yeah. Like as we, we see do. progress, and like it. also, it, you know, when we do four one mile repeats, we can do the last one and be like, okay, what's like kind of the effort? What's kind of the last effort? And then we do six, and then we go, okay, we were able to get to that effort. Let's see, can we do the last two at that effort? You know, that's yeah, kind of thing. progress build. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, so I'm do I did the same with Sarah and her plan. I gave her 800s instead of. So Sarah's gonna run Tokyo. We're pretty excited yes, about that. So soon too. And like so we March. gave her um, 800s instead of mile repeats, and so she's gonna do half the 800s at marathon pace. Nice. And the other half at the fast pace. The second half at the fast pace. <laughs> Because so many times with these mile repeats or with track workouts, people go out faster than they're supposed to and then can't finish the workout. And so if you really practice being slower, then you're able to like kind of speed up. I mean, or if you're like right, if you're actually running the paces that are prescribed right for you, yeah. then you're able to do all of them, right? right? Like we only ever got into trouble when 
you know, we're supposed to do like 740s and we're we'll running 7 720s instead or right. 710s. And then you get into, like, I remember getting into my own head and being like, yeah. 719s aren't happening today. Like, I can only run a 722. What is this bullshit? I'm like, that is not different. Right. <laughs> It's funny how, right, it's funny how, like, when I was looking back at some of our different, you know, marathons and how, whether we negative split them, positive split them, whatever, yeah. which I haven't negative split one, but the most even split one we did, or it might have been a slight negative, was the rest in, you know, training know. run. And it's what's funny is, though, I felt like I had a massive slowdown, but it was all in my head. It's because I you got sped faster. Up. You yeah. sped up and negative split, but, like, I felt like I had this massive slowdown and I didn't. It was, like, an even split race. So it's weird how... You know, yeah, mentally you can get in your head with these things and yeah. you just, you need to like focus on something else, basically. I just get <laughs> so, the big picture. it's so funny at the end of the marathon, like I get so like ready to be done that I do tend to speak. Right. It's really. Right. And, and like, it was, I'm like, I must be done I with just this want to be, crap. Get this over with. And you start, yeah, chugging. Like, I did. I wanted to share one other thing. I wrote down some of my favorite signs from the yeah. race. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so some these were some of the ones I remember. I don't even like driving 26 miles. I agree with that. <laughs> True statement. Blink twice if you need me to call you an Uber. <laughs> That's my favorite. Um, running is dumb. And I ran up to her and I'm like, running is so dumb, right? Like, and she's like, yes, it's so dumb. I love it. Share a moment. There was a guy holding one that just said, why? <laughs> That's good. Um, and then there was this dude. This was amazing. He was in a chicken costume. Uh -huh. And his sign said, I'm just trying to cross the road. And he, had, and he would show up like all over the course. I loved him. And then the, my other one, which I saw in another race recently, was I like attention too. <laughs> <laughs> that is that so, is the best. Thank you, spectators, for the signs. Yeah. Like I love when That's have good signs and fun people out there doing stuff and sharing all the enjoyment. Oh my gosh. Spectators are the best. <laughs> Maybe we need a shirt that says I run marathons because I like attention. <laughs> I think we do. I think they're making that shirt. <laughs> yeah. It's so true. Um, speaking of shirts, we should do a we should probably do a little shirt order. Yeah. It was so fun last time. And we thank you everybody who listens who's supported us um by buying a shirt. It's yeah. really awesome. Right now, actually, you can support us by going to beautycounter.com. And they have 20 slash run Galloway girls <laughs> and they have 20% off site wide plus a free gift with purchase of nice. 150 or more. So it's a great time to stock up and in gifts. It's a good time to buy gifts for your, yeah. or for your friends and loved ones. It's that time of year. Yeah. Red and Friday they just season. added a really cute eyeshadow palette for uh, the gift with purchase. So nice. as one of the options, so you have an option of four products, but two of them are going to sell out soon. So for the gifts, for the free gifts. So you should get out, get on that. Um, but yeah, so awesome. it's super, uh, I'm so proud of you and Thank your race. You. I wish I had been there though. I do too, but I, yeah, I'm so proud of myself. And for, I'm also you know, so happy I didn't run 26. Also, I miles. know, I know. I also feel like you made the right call. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm definitely so glad that I was able to do it. And like, even though I didn't have, have you there to like pull me through, I had, you know, I'm glad that I had enough like mental stamina to you do did it. so great. So. Yeah, um, we had our amnio this week, so I'm finally like, like we don't have the results yet, but we should have them soon, and they should be. We're not expecting any surprises, so we're we're okay. But I had like a 24 hour restriction, and now I'm like no restrictions again. Oh, good, so you like, can start ready. exercising. Yeah, so I did nice. my 20 minutes on the peloton this morning. It was great. Awesome. Um, I might have to like turn off the feature to tell me what my old PRs are. Like, just hide that. <laughs> I just hide that. Like, it's not for, you know, you're not there for yeah. that. Yeah. So, but it'll be fine. I'm just going to do my three little 20 minute rides a week and my three little, oh, what I was going to say. Oh my gosh. So I've done some prenatal strength on Peloton. And let me tell you, prenatal strength was made for runners. It is all posterior chain. Oh. It's like all the whole back. Because, awesome. And I was like, this is what runners need. Like, that's what I kept thinking the whole time was, oh my gosh, 360 breathing, like belly breathing, right? Runners need that. Yeah. A strong pelvic core. Runners need that. Yeah. And a strong posterior chain with like awakening your glutes and your hamstrings. Nice. I'm like, that's what runners yeah. need. So you're going to have to change the Strava title if, <laughs> because otherwise people are going to think you're pregnant too, unless you are, which is great. Congratulations if you are too. Uh, but 
do the prenatal strengths with Robin Anton from 2020. They're after she had her first baby, but she talks about why the posterior chain is so important for like prenatal and and even postpartum but like it's actually super important for runners yeah. so many of us are quad dominant hamstrings and glutes are like so, a right? spot for most of us so it's that would be a great great workouts to do That's because awesome. she also talks about like use these modifications when you're doing a regular strength class and they're doing x y or z you can do that like if they're doing abs on their back you can do this bird dog you know yeah like, yeah and and it's like oh duh like this makes so much sense but yeah that's really smart i mean i was super sore my whole like back like my like my side back abs right. were sore my glutes have been sore my hammies have been awake it's been i'll have to do some of those yeah. when i'm back to some workouts because that's what's still sore on me right now is yeah. like my lower back like you know the pounding yeah. of 26 miles it's it's no joke um yeah we're gonna get so strong we're gonna get so strong yeah. um while i go through my pregnancy so that we can just get right into hammering for marathon training so exciting <laughs> which is like it sounds so crazy because I know, like, I haven't even gone through, like, even the hard part of pregnancy yet or birth. It sounds so crazy that I'm like, I'm like, yeah, like, five, six months out, I'm going to run, I'm going to run a marathon. I'm going to be, like, back under four hours. People are like, are you crazy? <laughs> are you the Lulu or? Are you crazy? And I'm like, hmm, I might. No, you're ambitious. I might, but what's the worst that happens? I run a 4.15? Exactly. Like, I feel like it's still, you know. I run a 508. It's, okay. Exactly. It's, Maybe I'll run a 506. <laughs> no, you're going to be faster than that. And like, it's, yeah. it's going to, you know, it's, it's just, it is who you are. It's the same thing for me. Like I had to get back into it. It's who I am and yeah. it's important to you. So it's, it's good to have the goals and to set it out there and to go for it. Why yeah. not? Well, and the that worst, was, you know, the worst thing that happens is I go, yeah, you know what? I'm not really, marathon shape is not happening because of X, Y, and Z. I'm going to drop to the half. I'm going to focus right. on a fast half so that I can build to have a good season because I do, like, I do want to before, like, you know, too long. I would like to get back into getting close to Boston qualifying shape. I've mm -hmm. done it before. I should be able to do it again. Maybe not before she's one, maybe, she, you know, by the time she's three or something, but it might, like, it might take longer than I'm hoping, but right. you know, it might not if I do the work. Well, and it's like the hard part, putting the work in. <laughs> but it's also like, yeah, I love the, uh, you know, that thought of like, there's, you don't have that much to lose. I mean, yeah, something can go wrong. You can have something to lose, but the, you know, that's like how I felt with this, with this cycle and this really short cycle. And you know, I was so grateful, like each with both Marine Corps and with Philadelphia, like I at mile like 18 or 20 or whatever, I'm like, oh my God, I might really do it. I might really finish a marathon today. Like I'm and now I am going to do it. I am going to finish a marathon. Yeah. And like to have that great, that like gratefulness of like yeah. being able to complete it. And I know what you're so big. Full. It, if include 50k, uh, the 50k oh, it, so, oh right and so 19 will be marine corps which we haven't signed up for yet but if we do marine corps we'll be 19 and then richmond will be 20 yeah okay yeah and philly was my ninth um and yeah, yeah i was looking at it didn't it took me until if you include 50ks it took me until six to break four yeah. at richmond i thought it was sooner but it took me six yeah it took me four to break four it was my fourth yeah i mean it depends if you count that 50k or not because i wasn't obviously trying to break four at the right. 50k but the trail 50k but um, so five to break four in yeah. the mirror in the in, marathon yeah. yeah and then you know i do count the 50k i count 50k i'm counting them as part of like 50k or marathon which as yeah yeah as and that's, marathon distance yeah yeah i was chatting sense. with a marathon maniac on saturday or on sunday morning she was, she's at like you know 255 or something she just she runs marine corps every year it's her mm -hmm. she comes up from north carolina nice this is her ninth marine corps and um yeah and she's like she counts them together yeah she ran the 50k at marine corps so she counts yeah, them together yeah. when she's counting her marathons it's yeah. marathon or 50k yeah that makes sense so. to me because yeah that put so marine corps was my 30th yeah. And so Marine Corps will be 31, Richmond will be 32, and then if we decide to do CIM, they'll be 33. Wow. Amazing. I don't know. I don't know how three is going to work. Like, three is going to be a lot. And six like the, months, seven months postpartum. The other thing about it, too, is the travel. And, like, 
Yeah. That's tough too with, yeah. with little ones. Oh. It was, you know, we, we ended up, we sent my 11 year old over to uh, my brother's house where my mom got to babysit a 13, 11, 11 and seven year old for the night before yeah. the marathon so that we with a three year old go to dinner and go to bed at eight o'clock. That's and awesome. that was way better to like have, yeah. you know, cause he, go, he can go to bed early with us. Right. But it is, it is hard when you're sharing a hotel room with little ones or being away from them. So, well, I was thinking with Richmond, like, I mean, we should, unless, is Scott going to come? Back? So he said, he made me sign him up for the half. Okay. <laughs> he was like, wait, you signed up for Richmond. Can you sign me up for the half? So I did. So <laughs> we've got to get your mom to come babysit or get Brian to babysit Addie and your kids. Well, my mom's going to babysit my kids. I don't know about that. Okay. Baby. I don't know about No, 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 no. Else. Brian can babysit. I was saying Brian could babysit your kids oh, and Addie. No, I'll have my your mom. Your mom's going to come up. Okay, good. Although, yeah, I, I mean, like, Lila will be 12. So, no. I mean, she'll be helpful. Well, anyway, yeah, I'll have my mom but come. But I, I was thinking, like, I, would, I was thinking maybe, like, I might do the, like, scary thing for a Saturday race and drive down that morning. Oh my God. I can get your packet for you. Yeah. Or, <laughs> or just go and like, you know, go Friday, just spend, Friday the, night night. Away, spend mm. the night away from the baby. It'll be fine. It will She'll be, be fine. fine. She'll survive. Oh yeah, definitely. She'll survive. Plus I read this whole thing about how dads are made, not born. And so yeah. the best way for dads to really get their, like level up their dadness is one on one time with their infants. Yes. For sure. And so that is like the best they need so way. Much practice. So I'm like, you know, I'm like excited for Brian to have a lot of one on one time with right. Addie. You right. know? Uh he was like, he was like, what do you mean you might have to work a couple hours every day as soon as two weeks postpartum? I was like, I, I might not have to leave the house, but right. I might have to work. Well, again, and like not, there's yeah. like I'm the executive director. I do all of our financials. Like, yeah, I do. Like, there's run payroll. There's you administrative gotta... stuff yeah. that like nobody else does. Yeah, sure, I could train somebody else, but it it's probably going to take me longer to train somebody else than it would right. for me to just log in and do the hour or two of work a day. So yeah. Anyway. Yeah, well, it'll be good. Yeah, dads do need a lot of practice. It doesn't come as naturally. Yeah. Not that it comes naturally to women either. We have to work at it. But Oh, he's so excited. It's awesome. Like, we're so excited. Like, we've talked about, like, how we each have our own baby wearing, like, like things Yay. so that they can be set up for us rather yeah. than, yeah. Changing the straps out and everything. Yeah. Nice. So, Alex gave us a Lily baby. And I ha I bought one. And so, and I think she has, like, two others. She's I have Osprey another Lily okay. baby. Perfect. Too. Perfect. <laughs> I don't think because we're when they anymore. puke on them, like, you need... <laughs> Oh, so Alex actually has an Osprey backpack that would work, that she really liked for hiking with Evie, that would still work for Julia. Oh, we, so. we have a framed one still. Yeah. If we need it, but. So, anyway, she really liked it. But, yeah. yeah who knows? Maybe I'll be running with Ours Addie. is a Kelty. Like, right I'll then. be, like, just put her in the lily baby, like, on my belly and do some, like, 1530s with her. I don't know about that. <laughs> some speed walking, maybe. <laughs> I mean, it's isn't it just like she's inside? Isn't that the same? No, it's not. <laughs> no, the center of gravity's off too. Oh yeah, they're up high. Yeah. Oh man, their head is on your chest. So yeah, it's crazy. So I can't exciting. just like put her down here. <laughs> put her in like a in my head. get like a big like fanny pack. A big fanny and wrap pack. Wrap her around oh, the middle. This might be our spy new belt. thing. It will like the baby it. spy belt. Yeah, we'll the pregnancy one. belt. <laughs> just clips. And like maybe maybe there's like a gel pouch that you put the baby in to protect them. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> is this not this is not gonna not gonna be a thing? Or just leave the baby at home. That's actually yeah. my plan when I and just be able to get some yes. time. And outside. jogging shoulders are great too. Oh yeah. So, so excited about that. <laughs> the Somebody asked me, they were like they were like, So, oh yeah, you oh Amanda, I was talking with her. It's like, well, you still have your stroller. I was like, well, I only have a double. I was like, I probably don't need a double with one infant. And I was like, I kind of want one new thing. amazing thing. Yeah. And so I am like, I, that's like, that was top of my registry, like a Bob jogging stroller. Like, yeah. I'm like ready for it. Yeah. <laughs> so nice. Brian has no idea how big all this stuff is. And like, where it's going to go. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Well, I think what we're going to do actually 
And then we should probably dump out this a long podcast to just I know. talk about I gotta go to work. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we're gonna tear it out of our deck and like rebuild oh. it with a whole bunch of under deck storage. storage. Smart. That's like waterproof. Yeah, closed so in. Could, and... Yeah, like not quite temperature controlled, but like right. Yeah, oh, like a shed. It's so like real, for yeah. for bikes, for the jogging stroller, for all that stuff to get it off the deck, and we're actually. Yeah. And we may do a fence around. We haven't, we've got to figure that out. Nice. So lumber is so expensive. <laughs> yeah. So. It's a lot, but, but yeah, it'll yeah. be great. But, oh, it's going to be fun training. It's going to be fun talking you through recovery over the next couple of weeks. Yeah. And getting these uh, half marathon plans out. We cannot wait to help support you guys on your half marathons this spring, even full marathons. Um, reach out. We are trying to put together some sort of virtual Group. groups we're not sure how that's gonna work but <laughs> we want to do it <laughs> we want to get people connected we want to make this community so yeah email us at rungallygirls yeah. at gmail.com um message us or on messages, instagram and yeah, Insta, yeah if you're interested we'll figure out how to get something going yeah and don't forget if you like this podcast please like and subscribe like everywhere and yeah. tell some friends about it and share it in your stories and you know, it's definitely a labor of love for us, and we love even if like just one person gets something out of it. It's yes, amazing. It is. It's so fun for us to do, and we are on YouTube. Actually, like the the episodes Yay! in the week that we recorded them are on YouTube oh, now. I have I have to share this one moment. I told you about it. So at the finish line, this young lady comes up to me. I find oh, yeah. out later she's twenty four years old. She's a baby. So yeah. So her name's so Beth. fast. She's like. Oh my God, you're Naomi. I follow you on Instagram. I'm totally starstruck. I'm, and she's like, just so, Aww. she's like, you've inspired me so much. This is her first Aww, marathon. She bought a sparkle skirt because of me, I guess. Yay. She said. And I like, I just was like, I was so amazed that like, I have inspired someone. So that's, that's just awesome. so amazing that like, to feel like we're actually helping inspire people out there. So thank you guys. Like, yeah. it's, you guys inspire us. And I'm just, yeah, I was so thrilled for her. She did an awesome time. She ran a 416, which was a baller first marathon. I know. She felt amazing. a little bad because she fell off pace from her. She's with two friends who finished, like she said, you know, they finished way before me. She's like, I got to mile 21 and I was where I thought it was going to be at the finish line. And I'm like, I feel Aww, that. I know how that there. goes. Been you feel there. like you're like, oh, I'm supposed to, I was running at 333 today. Nope. I'm at mile 21 at 333 or whatever. Yeah. But, um, so yeah, I'm just like amazed in awe, like by you guys and, um, yeah. And Thank you guys. Penny is whining, but Penny's we have another potty. product that we have to, <laughs> that we get nothing from, but we are going to promote is the Black Friday sale at sparkleathletic.com yeah. is buy one, get one 50% off. So go stock up on some super awesome, cute skirts and sparkle. Yeah. Everywhere everyone loved go. my, my beer and pretzel skirt this I weekend. People one. were so excited. Like, oh my God, look at her skirt. It's beer. I love it. It's the best. It's the best. <laughs> All right. Well, we will see you guys next week for another episode and thank you so much thank you bye, bye.